Welcome, everyone. Um, it is an honor to welcome you on behalf of the student representatives of the University of Hamburg, because despite all the challenges, challenges, it's been a great experience to organize this conference for the fourth time together with our friends from the Network for an Alternative Quest. First, I want to thank everyone who supported us during the last weeks. It was a slap in the face when the university chair announced the withdrawal of the rooms for the conference at such short notice. Accepting this attack on academic freedom and the autonomy of the student body obviously was never an option. So what followed were two weeks of unforeseen obstacles, controversial discussions, and little sleep, but here we are. The solidarity from all over the world, the immense support that followed in response to her joint statement was overwhelming. I am very grateful for all the messages we've received and I want to thank everyone from the bottom of my heart who against all odds and attempts of repression made this conference possible. I am extremely grateful to see that so many people made it to Hamburg to join us to challenge capitalist modernity together. We want our world back. What we certainly didn't know was that this would first mean reclaiming our very own university. I am still shocked about the ruthless behavior of the university president who accused the conference of extremism and withdrew the permission to host the event on our campus. Professor Hauke Hegerin decided to listen to insubstantial accusations of the German intelligence agency. This ironically named Federal Office for the Protection of the Constitution is especially infamous in Germany. Founded with the participation of former members of the National Socialist Regime, this agency has remained true to its roots to this day. Its entanglement with the right-wing terrorist group NSU is just one example among many. In outlawing the conference, the president undermines what should be the basic principles of a democratic university, namely the right to freedom of speech and freedom of academia. All attempts on our part to hold talks with him in order to reach a compromise have been rejected or ignored. The university chair, bowing down to the state's intelligence service, demonstrates the reality of an education system firmly chained by capitalist modernity. The president is mistaken, mistaken in thinking that he can censor scientific discourse without consequences and undermine the autonomy of the student body in this way. We are deeply appalled by this attack on student self-governance, the autonomy of academia, and freedom of speech. We resist. We resist the encroaching sense of hopelessness that seems endemic among those who seek social change these days. We resist decisions made in ivory towers over whose voices can and cannot be heard by people who only seem to be pulling their cloak of indifference tighter in the face of planetary crisis. We will resist the oppressive authorities in place and reclaim our campus to make it a convergent space for global, radical, political imagination. We fight. We fight for a university which is truly structured along the basic premises of democracy and for a university where research and teaching that challenge the status quo are desired and encouraged. Because what we learned during the last two weeks is that democracy is and will always be a constant struggle, a process of continual becoming that can never be taken for granted. Real bottom-up democracy means constant renegotiation inspired by the will to create a more egalitarian future for all. We reclaim. Because along these lines, reclaiming our world and our campus first means reclaiming radicalism, which is so commonly confused with extremism. As Hannah Arendt has taught us in the context of Germany's fascist past, quote, evil cannot be both ordinary and radical. Evil is always extreme, never radical. Good is always deep and radical. We have been accused of radicalism, but what does radicalism mean? Allow me to remind them of the origins of the word, that it comes from the Latin radix, meaning root. This is precisely what we are attempting to do at this conference, addressing the root cause of the crisis. So we resist, we fight, and we build. Because fossil capitalism has gotten us to a point where the IPCC is warning us of a three-degree global warming by the end of the century, leaving vast parts of our planet uninhabitable. We need radical change, and we need it now. 
but instead we are witnessing increasingly repressive lines of state action against climate justice activists being sent to jail without trial in Germany, criminalized and defamed as terrorists. It is alarming that our university president adopts a strikingly similar rhetoric, a rhetoric that even Guterres, the general secretary of the UN, calls madness since the truly dangerous radicals are the countries that are increasing the production of fossil fuels. In this sense, the university chair's accusations seem especially ironic against the backdrop of a 2016 resolution of the Academic Senate directed against the war of the Turkish government in the Kurdish regions calling for a peace settlement and voicing strong criticism of the repressive actions of the Turkish government against the signatories and the associated restriction of academic freedom. Quote, this is an attack against some democratic and critical science. The hypocrisy is unmistakable. This critical scientific exchange is supported only when taking place elsewhere. We will leave it to others to highlight the oppression of the Kurdish movement and so many other movements represented at this conference, but we want to denounce the disgraceful measures taken by the university chair. The university's actions are especially revealing in the light of its own history. It was founded in 1908 as a colonial institute. More than a century later, the current president is still unwilling to take debates from the global south seriously instead dismissing them in a chauvinistic manner as unscientific propaganda. Perhaps because he's aware that democratizing the university also endangers his status. The past two weeks were intense and challenged us, the student committee, to critically reflect not only on our relation with the university chair, but especially also the dynamics within the ASTA, namely the principles which inform processes of decision making and communication within the student body. Studying at a university which is incredibly hierarchical, it is easy to become blind to the ways in which power structures inconspicuously shape our social interactions and to reproduce them. Generally speaking, while understanding the necessity of collective action, of speaking with one voice, we can never lose sight of the dignity of the individual. Democratic principles combined with a self-critical spirit need to inform our actions on all levels, especially in moments of crisis when decision-making means compromising. Only then can we resist collectively. It is both absurd and unsettling that those in power don't hesitate to take ever more unscrupulous steps to criminalize those who dare to resist the capitalist system, its racist logic of colonial exploitation and patriarchal power structures and nothing but a vain attempt to keep what Jason Moore calls, quote, a dead man walking alive. However, what the reaction of the university president also proves is that we're on the right path. Because there has, been, there has never been and will never be radical change that does not face massive resistance. It shows that if we find the courage to see beyond Capitolocene's rotten systems, we will most certainly face violent oppression and the struggle for the utopias of the future. This is why this conference is unique in the way that it has brought together people from all over the world to assert the right to self-determination and in, this, in the sense of the commune arts of Paris in 1871 to regenerate the future through critical education. I am very much looking forward to a weekend of inspiring talks, critical, workshop, critical workshops and beautiful encounters. Let's create what Christina Heatherton calls a convergent space for international radicalism to make meaning out of our shared struggles and build international solidarities. Thank you. Thank you.